This is a production of WTVI PBS Charlotte. Going to the gym hasn't always been a priority for 13 year old Marlon Clark. Now it's not unusual to find him here shooting hoops and hitting the treadmill. But if you spotted Clark at the YMCA a year and a half ago, you probably wouldn't have recognized him. I didn't know that I was that much overweight. Dr. Ann Walker has been monitoring Clark's weight since he was a baby. Being can see here's birth to 20 years old. When Clark turned two, she also started tracking his BMI or body mass index. According to the National Institutes of Health, BMI is a measure of body fat based on height and weight. It's the how your height and weight match up with one another. And here's why it's important. BMI is an easy and inexpensive way for doctors to see if patients are overweight or obese. An unhealthy weight can increase your risk for developing conditions like hypertension, coronary heart disease, stroke, liver and gallbladder disease, sleep apnea, osteoarthritis, and gynecological problems. The list doesn't stop there. Orthopedic problems like a bad back or uh, knee problems. Diabetes certainly is linked to it. Heart disease is partially linked to our weight. Some cancers like endometrial, breast, and colon are also linked to obesity. Doctors use this chart to calculate BMI for children and adults, but BMI is interpreted a bit differently for each group. Adults ages 20 and older can interpret BMI using standard weight categories that are the same for men and women. For example, a BMI between 18.5 and 24.9 falls in the normal range. A BMI between 25 and 29.9 means you're considered overweight. And a BMI above 30 puts you in the obese range. But for children and teens ages 2 through 19, age and gender play a role in interpreting BMI. Dr. Walker uses a growth chart to show the relationship between BMI and weight. But many people depart the curve, and when I can show that convincingly, that's when people wake up. Clark's wake-up call came in the summer of 2013. He weighed 160 pounds, putting his BMI at an unhealthy 31 on the chart. And then now he's departing the curve. That's when Clark decided to take action. After some pointers from Dr. Walker, he started looking for places in his diet to clip calories by consuming less sugar and drinking more water. He also started exercising more, doing things like sit-ups and push-ups. It was kind of hard for me to do, and I didn't think I could do it, but I believed in myself and other people believed in me. Through sweat, self-discipline, and determination, Clark dropped 32 pounds over a year and a half, improving his BMI to a mildly overweight 25. This is a gentleman who has conquered the beginnings of a foundation for better eating the rest of his life. 59-year-old Jeffrey Williams didn't develop that foundation until much later in life. Like Clark, Williams struggled with his weight at a young age. I'd always yo-yo. I would lose it and then I'd go celebrate. But he was much older when he finally got his weight under control. At one point, he tipped the scales at 396 pounds. I was morbidly obese. With a BMI of 53.7, Williams took drastic measures to get the weight off, including surgery. He also started exercising and eating better. I had two sons, and I wanted to be around for them to get married and be able to see my grandkids. Since then, he's lost 181 pounds. He's come a long way. These at one time would not even have fit me. But he's still considered overweight, with a BMI of 29.2. I'm wanting to get down under 200. And to lose weight, you need to use more calories than you take in. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, people who lose about one to two pounds each week are more successful at keeping that weight off. One pound equals 3,500 calories, which means in order to lose about a pound a week, you need to cut about 500 calories each day. Which is about a half a sandwich and a, a big sugared sports drink. The mathematics of it is fascinating to me. There's no magic. No magic, just a lot of self-discipline. And that's a lesson you're never too young to learn. For every one of those steps you make, if you make that over and over again, those are those little victories that turn into a big success. Success that shows on the BMI chart, proving that knowing your number is often the first step to saving your life. Now with every step Clark and Williams take, they're reminded of the progress they've made and motivated by their commitment to maintain their new bodies and newfound health. For Carolina Impact, I'm Danielle Koser reporting.